ദൈവത്തിന്റെ ഭരണത്തിന്റെ കീഴിലേ ദൈവാരാധന at the appointed time all such questions will be answered if you have patience before you make any covenant or friendship with anyone take holy spirit with you jalathalum aathmavinalum janikkunnillengil oru venum devarajyathil praveshikkuka sadhyamalla the lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the passion of our lord jesus christ according to saint matthew glory to you o lord chapter 27 verses from 11 jesus was brought before pontius pilate the governor and the governor put to him this question are you the king of the jews jesus replied it is you who say it but when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders he refused to answer at all pilate then said to him do you not hear how many charges they have brought against you but to the governor's complete amazement he offered no reply to any of the charges at festival time it was the governor's practice to release a prisoner for the people any one they choose now there was at that time a notorious prisoner whose name was barabbas so when the crowd gathered pilate said to them which do you want me to release for you barabbas or jesus who is called christ for pilate knew it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over Now as he was seated in the chair of judgment his wife sent him a message have nothing to do with that man i have been upset all day by a dream i had about him the chief priests and the elders however had persuaded the crowd to demand the release of barabbas and the execution of jesus so when the governor spoke and asked them which of the two do you want me to release for you they said barabbas but in that case pilate said to them what am i to do with jesus who is called christ they all said let him be crucified why he asked what harm has he done but they shouted all the louder let him be crucified then pilate saw that he was making no impression that in fact a riot was imminent so he took some water washed his hands in front of the crowd and said i am innocent of this man's blood it is your concern and the people to a man shouted back his blood be on us and on our children then he released barabbas for them he ordered jesus to be first scourged and then handed over to be crucified the governor's soldiers took jesus with them into the praetorium and collected the whole cohort round him then they stripped him and made him wear a scarlet cloak and having twisted some thorns into a crown they put this on his head and placed a reed in his right hand to make fun of him they knelt to him saying hail king of the jews and they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head with it and when they had finished making fun of him they took off the cloak and dressed him in his own clothes and led him away to crucify him on their way out they came across a man from cyrene simon by name and enlisted him to carry his cross when they had reached a place called golgotha that is the place of the skull they gave him wine to drink mixed with gall which he tasted but refused to drink when they had finished crucifying him they shared out his clothing by casting lots and then sat down and stayed there keeping god over him 
above his head was placed the charge against him it read this is jesus the king of the jews at the same time two robbers were crucified with him one on the right and one on the left the passers by jeered at him they shook his heads and said so you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in 3 days then save yourself if you are god's son come down from the cross the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him in the same way he saved others they said he cannot save himself he is the king of israel let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him he put his trust in god now let god rescue him if he wants him for he did say i am the son of god even the robbers who were crucified with him taunted him in the same way from the 6th hour there was darkness over all the land until the 9th hour and about the 9th hour jesus cried out in a loud voice eli eli lama sabachthani that is my god my god why have you deserted me when some of those who stood there heard this they said the man is calling on elijah and one of them quickly ran to get a sponge which he dipped in vinegar and putting it on a reed gave it to him to drink wait said the rest of them and see if elijah will come to save him but jesus again crying out in a loud voice yielded up his spirit let us kneel down wherever we are at that the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to the bottom the earth quaked the rocks were split the tombs opened and the bodies of many holy men rose from the dead and these after his resurrection came out of the tombs entered the holy city and appeared to a number of people meanwhile the centurion together with the others guarding jesus had seen the earthquake and all that was taking place and they were terrified and said in truth this was a son of god the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ kindly be seated wherever you are today as we have this extra ordinary palm sunday service as we are not able to go to the church we are not able to physically participate in the palm sunday service the lord is inspiring us to do this online but in effect as we know the lord is so close to you his name is immanuel he is more than with you he is and he is inside you there is no god who can be inside you like jesus because he is your creator you are his temple he created you so that he can live on this earth through you and in you and as we today reflect on the passion of Jesus Christ the lord jesus is inspiring us everyone who are suffering my daughter my son don't be sad don't feel depressed don't feel lonely i have 
gone through the same suffering you are going through today in your sick bed there is no testing this is 1 corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 the lord is teaching us that no testing that has come upon you is not without my knowledge and he will give you the power no testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone god is faithful and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength but with the testing he will with the testing that he will give you the power to overcome it god gives you the grace to overcome the suffering the struggles that you have my dear sisters and brothers therefore the suffering that you have is known to the lord he is the lord who has already experienced it in his body now the passion narrative that we are going through we understand the sufferings of jesus S uh, sister eugenia she revealed that our god the father god is the father of all mankind his love is manifested by giving his only begotten son and this son according to saint bridget of sweden had suffered more than 5430 wounds in his body 5430 wounds if you look at those sufferings last day i was checking at something called 15 secret sufferings of jesus 15 secret sufferings of jesus those sufferings include where jesus was being his beard was being pulled out he was being made to sit in in fire in in the nails unimaginable sufferings people spat on him they put dirt and filth in his mouth my dear sisters and brothers the lord is today consoling you saying maybe you are you are asking so many too many questions why you are suffering why you are going through this agony that you are thinking about your children your family your future your business you don't have any answers my dear sisters and brothers jesus through his suffering has proved there is meaning in suffering there is a real purpose in every suffering what you need to do offer the suffering that you have into the suffering of jesus your suffering will have meaning when you offer this suffering to the body of jesus praise the lord it is through that you will find the meaning that is why we have read in the first reading this is from the prophet isaiah this is chapter 50 verse 4 we have read that he has given you the tongue of a teacher that he is training you how through suffering the lord god has given me the tongue of a teacher that i may know how to sustain the weary with a word morning by morning he wakens he wakens my ear so that i may hear him so today as we are uh, participating in this palm sunday service i do remember an incident where a young girl came to me she is from kenya she came to me with two little daughters two little kids and she's a very young girl and she asked me father can you pray over my kids so while i wanted to pray for the kids i asked her are you are these your kids she said yes father these are my kids then i asked her are you married she said no i'm not married then i asked then how can you have kids because i know sometimes people can get kids children without the sacrament of marriage and i was very upset 
because she said this, they are not her kids. Then I asked her, how old are you? She said, she is just 20 years. Then I asked, then how can you have kids if you are not married, if you are just 20 years? Then she said, no father, these are my adopted kids. These are my adopted children. Then I asked, how can you adopt these children? Then she said, father, I have a good job. I can maintain them. I can take care of them because uh, they are orphans and they have no one. That's why I want to be a mother to them. And they are so happy. They call me mama and I feel fulfilled in my life. Then I asked her, then how do you take such a big risk? How can you just spoil your life by taking care of two kids? Then what about your future, your marriage, your life partner? Can anyone marry you that you have already two kids? Even if you say they are adopted, will they ever accept it? How can you do such a, a serious thing in your life without thinking too much? Then she told me, Father, even me, I am an orphan. I know the pain of orphans. I know these kids need help right now from me. I was helped. I was assist assisted. The Lord became my father and my mother. And he proved me to be compassionate to the orphans, to the suffering. My dear sisters and brothers, this is what we have just read in Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4 where the Holy Scripture says, The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. To listen as those who are taught because she has a heart that understands the pain of an orphan because she was an orphan. So her suffering as an orphan became a profound blessing of being a mother to the motherless orphans. My dear sisters and brothers, St. Paul also teaches us, this is from 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 4, St. Paul in his own suffering, he learned a new and an important lesson. And we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 4. Who consoles us in all our affliction. So that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction. With the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. We are consoled by God so that we can console others. I felt so pity about myself when I questioned her when she was taking care of the orphans because I never suffered being an orphan in my life. My dear sisters and brothers, let no one misguide you. If there is something called eternal treasure, that is the suffering that you endure with grace from God. It's only through suffering you can get linked with your master. It's only with suffering you are participating in the Paschal mystery of Christ. And we should always remember, no human being has to suffer more than Jesus. That is why St. Bridget wrote that he suffered more than 5,430 wounds. More than this, countless sufferings, countless persecutions, countless humiliations. People say they suffer. I have heard people asking this question even in this United Kingdom. They always ask a question, where was Jesus when I was suffering? Where was he? Why he abandoned us? Why I lost to my mother-in-law with the cancer? Why my people lost in the war? Why all these sufferings? We should know these sufferings are giving us an eternal treasure. Let's also read this is in 1 Peter 1 Peter in, in 1 Peter chapter 1 7 and 8 where the Lord is telling us about the purpose and the meaning of the sufferings so that from 6 we can read 1 Peter chapter 1 from 6 we read the scripture the purpose of the suffering that we have in these 
you rejoice when if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold that though perishable is tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed this momentary slight affliction that we are going through my dear sisters and brothers let us offer it to the Pascal mystery of Christ it has a purpose it has a meaning yesterday I heard our Bishop Bishop Joseph Srambikel while giving a homily to the zero Malabar Christians in the Great Britain while preaching he requested all the people especially those who are sick those who cannot make confession the bishop requested them this is a time to repent of all the sins you committed and more than that make sure that you don't commit any sin because you cannot make confession make sure that you keep away from sin as Jesus himself is telling us sin no more this is a time to stop committing sin to overcome sin we have to make sure that if there is no opportunity to confess what does the Lord say don't sin again we read in 1 Peter 4 from 1 verses 1 and 2 what does these suffering will turn out to be what does these sufferings will turn out to be the scripture says since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh arm yourselves also with the same intention for whoever has suffered in the flesh has finished with sin whoever has suffered in the flesh has finished with the sin let us pray to the Lord Lord if this coronavirus that is affecting my body my breathing system my health I have only one request Lord help me to stop committing certain sin especially the sin of the flesh the sin of lust maybe the sin of masturbation or homosexuality or watching pornography or filthy movies or watching filthy serials or anything Lord I want to get that grace and power to overcome sin of the flesh Lord let this suffering that I am going through come out as a channel of grace to stop any particular bad habit that I was struggling for many years to overcome and we read in one Peter 4 2 verse 2 and what is the purpose of this suffering my dear people of God we can turn this suffering for our good so as to live for the rest of your earthly life no longer by human desires but by the will of God the day that we come out of this sickness we should have this prayer and this desire no longer to live by human fleshly lustful desires but by the will of God Lord I pray earnestly that let, that let this suffering that I'm going through come out in the form of divine grace that I may become a new person a new creation Lord I hate sin so much and I need that grace to overcome sin and I know the suffering that I am going through in my body can help me overcome sin my dear sisters and brothers as the Lord himself said in this struggle that you are going through you are not alone he himself promised that he is with you in this suffering that you have and you can have a relationship with the Lord even in this suffering because he himself suffered Jesus there is no one there is no suffering that you have that is not found in Christ Jesus you are going through rejection Jesus was rejected you are going through isolation Jesus was isolated you are going through a kind of imprisonment Jesus was imprisoned you are going through poverty Jesus was gone through poverty you are going through a kind of misunderstanding Jesus was gone through misunderstanding you are going through a kind of betrayal Jesus was betrayed you are going through people whom you helped denied you Jesus was denied by his own people any suffering that you have 
my dear sisters and brothers this is psalm chapter 34 verse 5 this is what the scripture says look to him and be radiant so that your faces shall never be ashamed this is a high time that you have to look at jesus your creator your maker your only savior so that your faces shall never be ashamed so that you will get meaning for this suffering you will get meaning and when you get that meaning this is to give you grace a profound grace never to be a person of this world but to be a person of god the lord wants to give you not just a human identity but a divine citizenship a divine identity let this suffering come and do good to us as he himself said i will do turn everything for good romans 8 28 for those who love god for those who are called according to his purpose the lord turns everything for their good i do remember the life of saint josephine bakita she was a slave she was a pagan she did not even know jesus she was brought to Italy as a slave. First time she entered into a church. First time she saw crucifix in the church. Because she did not know what is crucifix. But in her country back in Sudan where she was born, the criminals, the slaves were being hung on the cross. When she saw the cross for the first time in Italy, she got fear because she thought even in Italy, the slaves are being hung on the cross because she did not know anything about Jesus. That's the time a priest entered into the church and the priest asked Bakita, why are you here? Bakita acknowledged that I'm a slave. I'm being brought to this country by a master and he's trying to abuse me and I have run away for my life and this is the only place I found to hide myself. The priest told her, you are welcome. This is your house. This is the house of God. My temple shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, for all people. You are also his beloved daughter. You are not a slave. You are also a daughter. Then Bakita asked, can you explain to me who is hanging on this cross? The priest explained, this is our God. Faustina was so shocked and surprised. How can this be God? This God cannot help himself. His hands are on the nails. His feet are on the nails. He cannot move himself. He cannot help himself. And how can this be a God? The priest explained. He's a slave. But he's our God. He is also a slave. Because he was born in a manger. He was sold for 30 silver coins. Those are the price of a slave. He was buried in a tomb because he had no land. He had no job. He was never employed. He was poor. He was a slave. That's why he washed the feet. He was a slave. That is why he was riding on a donkey. Today as we celebrate this Palm Sunday, the day that we celebrate where our king was riding on a donkey. He was a slave king. Kings are riding on horses. The priest explained to Bakita, this our God was a slave and he had so many wounds in his body. More than 5,430 wounds. Bakita started to cry. Because all over her body, from head to the bottom, there was wounds. Her masters, there were different five masters, took Bakita's slave and they used to beat her until blood comes out. They never take her to hospital. So she had all the wounds. She could not even sleep properly. She suffered. She was always thinking, there is no one who suffered like me. Now comes a priest explaining about Jesus, telling, there is no one who suffered like Jesus. And Jesus suffered even for you, Bakita. The priest explained. Bakita started to cry. And she said, If I do have a God, it should be, it must be, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. And that same day, G Bakita accepted Jesus as her personal savior and her whole life changed. The priest explained to her through Hebrews chapter 4 from 15 
4 from 15, the priest explained to her, we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who on every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin, was 16, therefore we have let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We have a God who is approachable. Again, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 18, the priest explained to Bakita that in your suffering that you are going through, because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested today when you are in the sick bed with this coronavirus being abandoned and rejected by all you are fearing death you are you are facing death you don't know what is what lies before you remember jesus died and conquered death he suffered and conquered suffering he is your lord Take him as your personal savior. Stop looking at people. Isaiah 51 7. The prophet, the word of God is teaching us that let do not be you listen to me. The Lord is telling you who know righteousness, you people who have my teaching in your hearts, do not fear the reproach of others and do not be afraid, do not be dismayed. When they revile you. Do not be dismayed. When people revile you. Do not look at them. Now. It's because Bakita a slave. When she looked at Jesus. Her faces became radiant. Her suffering. Her humiliation. Her slavery. Got meaning and purpose. She came to know. That Jesus was a slave like her. Otherwise my dear sisters and brothers. Bakita would have become a criminal, a person who beats others like she was beaten. She could have been a person who kills others, those who killed her parents and made her an orphan. But she became a healer, a profound saint. She received the name of Josephine. She became not just a religious nun, being a slave, she became a religious nun. And a saint being a slave. Why? Because she found meaning for her suffering in Jesus Christ. Today, as we are going through a rough, difficult time in this earth, the Lord is inviting each and every one of you to be holy. To be holy. The, the Catholic Church teachers, the Vatican II, Vatican Council, in the documents, chapter 5, titled Universal Call to Holiness. In the past, people thought being holy is reserved for bishops, priests and nuns, the consecrated, but the Catholic Church, the Vatican II, redefined that every human person Maybe you are a taxi driver, maybe you are a nurse, maybe you are a cleaner, maybe you are a doctor, maybe you are an engineer, maybe you are an architect, you may be a pilot, you may be a, an officer, a teacher, maybe you are a lawyer, whoever you are, you are also called to be a saint. There is no compromise on that. Let, let's not look at, let somebody else become, no, Jesus has died for each and every one of you. Jesus is inviting each and every one of us to be holy, not only priests. Remember, Jesus died not only for priests and nuns, he died for each and every individual. If Bakita could become a saint, if that poor young Kenyan girl could become a mother to the orphans through her suffering that she has gone through, Today on this Palm Sunday, the Lord is also inviting us to find meaning in our suffering in Christ who suffered. There is pup, if there is meaning in anything on this earth, that's only in suffering. Everything will pass away. Everything will disappear. But the suffering that you accept with humility and with gratitude from God, it will produce profound fruits in your life, my dear people. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, 
we beg you at this difficult time in our life to reveal to us your presence in our life the suffering that you have endured in your life lord i put my suffering into your suffering my little suffering lord that i what i am going through is nothing compared to what you have gone through i offer it to your suffering lord give me a new heart to praise and thank you even in the midst of suffering give me the grace to overcome sin as i suffer in my flesh lord deliver me from every sin i committed through my flesh the lustful sins through my five senses lord i consecrate it on this altar i surrender everything to you lord give me a new heart a new life and a new purpose amen